Hey everyone, uh, my name is Jason and uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, super big thanks to the Red Team Village for having me and uh, all the other speakers on and the staff for facilitating everything that's going on with the conference for DEF CON for hosting the village, a uh, big place in my heart for DEF CON. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, my methodology for recon. Um, I've been doing this talk called the Bug Hunters Methodology for five years now and I basically I update it every year. Um, and I talk about new tools and techniques um, in different spaces of the bug bounty scene and red teaming. Uh, so today we're gonna go over the recon stuff. Now the bug hunters methodology, TBHM, is a presentation, like I said, running for a long time. And basically it's too big for any one conference slot. So I split it into two sections. One is recon, which we're going over today. And the other is application analysis, which is uh, on-site hacking and, uh, and stuff like that. And so today we're gonna do recon and um, you know, I'm working on this year's version of application analysis. Haven't finished it yet. I'm a giant slacker, sorry. So, uh, so yeah, today we're gonna go over recon. A uh, little bit about me. So um, I'm a husband. Uh, father, hacker, gamer, and I stream sometimes. These are my socials, so if you wanna reach out and ask a question after the talk or something like that, just hit me up. Um, I was a bug hunter and then I worked at Bug Crowd for uh, many years and now I'm the head of um, security at Ubisoft. And uh, so I lead the security team there. Uh, awesome team, um, great people. And um, I'm also a gamer at heart, so I play some video games. These are, uh, these are my kids, uh, Arcadia and Avalon in the top picture. I took them to DEF CON for the first year. Last year did DEF CON Kids or Roots. It was amazing, they had a great time. And then that's my son Arlen, uh, him and I being pirates in the bottom, bottom right hand corner. So it's a little bit about me. I've been doing pen testing for about, uh, well, a long time. I'm old, and uh, yeah, so uh, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of related experience to to this talk. So, so the first thing I want to talk about is is today we're gonna we're gonna go over uh, recon methodology, and and we do recon in red teaming engagements, and we do recon in bug bounties primarily, and you can do it in some wide scope pen tests as well. Uh, and one of the first things I talk about is is when you're doing an assessment, some sort of assessment, whether it's one of those three, you have to have a way that jives with you to record your work. Otherwise, you're just throwing darts and forgetting what you're doing. And um, this is uh, this is counterproductive to to basically you know keeping organized. So um, the first thing that I talk about here is, is how I keep notes. And um, and I use a, a tool called XLine, which is a mind mapping tool. And uh, basically, I create nodes and I create methodologies as checklists inside these nodes. And I track all my domains and which ones I've worked on by color codes. And um, so this is something uh, I do. I've seen other people do a lot of project tracking for assessments in, you know, just Notepad or Vim, or there's some specialized pen test tools. You know, if you're really fancy and you have a subscription, you could probably do it in something fancy like Drawdis or something like that. So, um, so there's a lot of tools, but it, it's just really important to track your work when you're doing recon. Recon is, um, is the art of finding as many assets as possible related to a target. And, uh, and it, can get, it can get pretty data heavy and dense as you do it. So uh, having a, a way that works for you to track your data is, is the first thing that's gonna guide you to success. So this is an example of how I track my data when I'm, um, I'm on a target, right? So Tesla, Tesla Motors, uh, has an open scope uh, or pretty open scope bounty on Bug Crowd. And um, this is how I would start off my project with Tesla, right? So in the middle, I have a node in this mind mapping program I use called XMind. And then on the right hand or on the left hand side, I have uh, their autonomous system numbers or ASNs. I have any acquisitions they've made. I have uh, some other notes, LinkedIn discovery and a link to their reverse who is information. And on the right hand side, I'm starting to build out um, their root domains or their seeds. Or some roots or seeds are, um, are terms you know, for things like something.com or utesamotors.com or tesla.com or solar city, right? Um, and so I've started to build out, I've started to build out their seeds on the right hand side. So you can see Tesla Motors, Tesla, Solar City, et cetera, et cetera. And as I do this, I'm gonna start collecting a lot of data. As I do recon on Tesla, I'm gonna collect a lot of data. So that turns into this, which on the left hand side, you can see uh, for tesla.com, uh, that seed, I've enumerated all their subdomains and all of the live links, right? So these are all the live links for tesla.com for their subdomains. So things like, you know, pages.tesla.com, shop.tesla.com, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can drill down into any one of these. And so if I drill into www.tesla.com, then I have my methodology notes for that single site, which, you know, uh, inside of that node, uh, I, I keep all of the questions I ask myself when I'm 
when I'm basically looking to hack a website, right? Like, does the site have multiple user roles? Does it, how does it reference users? How does it handle special characters? You know, what are dynamic parameters? Does it have an API component? What kind of errors am I seeing? You know, does it have file uploads? Have I done JavaScript analysis for paths? Have I done uh, content discovery? Uh, you know, all these questions that you're normally going to, you know, kind of keep in your, your methodology. Um, I apply, I apply these all to each one of these subnotes, and then I color code my work um, based on where I am, right? And this is one of the most important things I think is that um, is that everything that is not filled in hasn't been worked on yet. So most of this hasn't been worked on yet, but everything in orange means I'm currently working on something, and everything in green, um, which is there's nothing green on here, I've already done. Um, and so just the you know the way I can do this, and then I can add check marks and other stuff in XMind uh, to these mind maps helps me track where I am, so I can easily put down a project and pick it back up if I want. Okay, so today's mission we're going to talk about uh, wide recon. Uh, this is the art of finding as many assets related to a target as possible. So you're a red teamer, or you're a bug bounty hunter, and you have a, a scope of X company, and uh, you know one of the things you need to do is identify all the websites that they own. Uh, because the more websites you identify or the more infrastructure you identify, the better your chance is of getting in or finding a bounty, right? And this is, this is a core component in you know, both of those skill sets. Um, and I break down what we call recon into a couple of domains. So um, finding first the in-scope domains via the program or your project um, brief, uh, your uh, finding acquisitions for the company or the target, um, doing ASN enumeration, doing reverse who is, doing a whole bunch of subdomain enumeration, and then doing port analysis. And then we're going to go into some related topics uh, like uh, some vulnerability scanning and some um, and some automation um, information related to recon, um, because you'll probably do it in this phase of your workflow. Okay. So you've decided you're going to do an assessment, or you've been handed a red team assessment, or you've been handed uh, a bug bounty that's wide scope, right? That's that's where we are right now. So the first thing we need to do is is uh, is parse the program page. So I'm going to use a bounty here, a couple bounties to illustrate, you know, where you would start, right? So here is uh, the brief page for the aforementioned Tesla um, for bug crap, right? So in their brief, they have star.tesla.com, star.tesla.cn, Tesla Motors, and Tesla Services, and then they also have this catch-all sentence here that says any host verified or owned by Tesla Motors that you can find, you know, is also included in scope. So this is what we consider a wide scope bug bounty. There's lots of stuff that you can do with this. Um, so for your first four seed domains are already listed here, Tesla.services, TeslaMotors.com, TeslaCN, and Tesla.com. So we're going to focus on these four and add them to our list. Uh, and then anything else we can find that is Tesla's is also fair game. So that's great. If you look at a platform like HackerOne, um, they also have a pretty wide scope bounty and probably the, the most prolific bounty available on the internet, which is Ryzen Media. And this is like the granddaddy, the biggest scope program I think I know of in the bug bounty scene. So Ryzen Media has gobbled up so many brands and uh, they have so much infrastructure related to these brands and sites and subdomains, um, it's giant. So like a lot of hackers make their whole career uh, hacking on Verizon Media, which is uh, which is awesome, and they're a great team, and they support the bug bounty community. They also have this catch-all kind of phrase in their scope that says, "If you found a vulnerability that affects an asset belonging to them, but it's not in scope, report it to the program." And so, um, it's a really advanced team to work with. You know, you couldn't even fit all of the domains that you have for this program on one page, which I, I didn't even try. So, uh, so you will parse your seed domains and your in scope domains from the program page to start off, and this will give you a starting place to to work from. The next thing that I do uh, when I'm scoping out a company is I want to find all their acquisitions, and this is a couple of there's a couple of reasons I want to do this. Um, I want to basically uh, see if any of the infrastructure for those acquired companies has not been taken off the line, um, or any of the subdomains or websites or integrations that were too hard to port over to new infrastructure are still online, right? Um, this gives me more and more you know, infrastructure and sites to hack. So to find the acquisitions, uh, I use a tool called Crunchbase. And Crunchbase is a business um, intelligence portal Basically, you add any business name to this search box on Crunchbase, and you'll be able to uh, look at that company and find out what are their employees, you know, what are their investor rounds, what acquisitions have they had, you know, what are their socials, etc. So here uh, I've used the example of Twitch.com. We're streaming on Twitch today, which is awesome. Um, and Twitch, you know, Twitch as an organization here has an entry, and if I click on that, 
I get a lot of information about Twitch. And I can see that uh, under their acquisitions tab, they have acquired four companies in the uh, last eight years, uh, Revlo, Clipmine, Curse, and Good Game. And then also they were acquired themselves on the left-hand side by Amazon. So this gives me a good idea of uh, you know, what they used to be, where I can also look for some infrastructure if it's a recent acquisition, like Revlo, for instance. You know, If I click on Revlo in this page, it'll take me to Revlo's page, which will give me their main domain, which is Revlo.com. So I might put that in scope of you know, a wide scope you know, assessment or a red team assessment, right? Acquisitions are important to keep track of. Now, the one thing that you want to make sure here is that on some of those brief pages that we looked at in the last couple of pages, um, some of these are explicitly out of scope. Um, so they'll say in the brief, uh, especially for Tesla, Solar City is not in scope of um, their wide scope bounty. Uh, so even though we found that as an acquisition of, of Twitch when I looked on this page, you know, when I've done it many times, um, it's, it's explicitly out of scope. So remember to refer to your project page or understand what is okay and what is not okay to hack or, or do recon on. Okay, so after I find the acquisitions, um, which has given me, you know, seed domains like Revlo.com and you know, new new seed domains other than Tesla Motors and Tesla and stuff like that, um, or, or any of these, you know, top level seed domains, what I want to do is I I want to find this company's autonomous system numbers, right? So uh, every company that gets large enough ends up, you know, um, having a collection of networks uh, basically applied uh, an AS number to them, and an uh, AS number, autonomous system number, is just a collection of your known IP ranges for your networks. Um, for your infrastructure. And so you can find someone's autonomous system number in many, in many ways. There's many search engines to do this kind of um, lookup. But I use one called Hurricane Electric or bgp.he.net. I use this uh, when I'm doing manual searching because it has a freeform text box at the top and I can just search the keyword Twitch. And here you can see uh, I found Twitch's two autonomous system numbers, uh, AS46, 489 and AS397153. And then uh, their associated IP ranges and IPv IPv4 ranges and IPv6 ranges. Um, so this is a good representation of the infrastructure that or the IP space that they own. And I can assume that it belongs to, I can guarantee that it belongs to them. Um, I don't have to worry about scope really here because I know that you know all this is owned by them. So if they have that catch-all phrase in their in their bounty project, or you know you've got the go-ahead in your red team engagement to you know open scope, then you you know this is your target. Um, one thing that this doesn't represent is their cloud assets. So um, this is all owned IP space. Uh, it doesn't represent things like AWS and Azure and GCP. Uh, ranges. So you won't find stuff that they host in those environments inside of these ranges. So um, yeah, you just want to be cognizant of that. So here I've searched Twitch. I got their ASNs. Um, with every tool or method here uh, in my methodology, um, I like to give you a manual way to do it because uh, context is important and getting used to the idea is important. Then I like to give you an automated way to do it in case you're going to script up your own recon framework, which is all the fad these days. And I have one of my own and everything. So um, there are two tools you can use to parse ASNs and IP ranges from companies um, that exist on the command line, right? If you're going to script this stuff up yourself. Uh, so one is called Metabigor. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm saying that name of the tool, right? By Jesse JJJ. Um, and this one utilizes uh, the, site, the site that we just saw, bgp.he.net, and another site called ASN Lookup. Uh, and it will grab the information from those websites, scrape it off, and give you um, your IP ranges for an organization. The other one is called ASN Lookup by Yasin. Um, same idea, it uses a different data source called the MaxMind database. Um, it'll pull off their IPv4 ranges from an ASN. Um, and you can give it just a, you can give these both, both tools a term instead of um, an AS number or anything like that. So they, they will pull it off based on, uh, you know, that keyword that we're looking for, in this case, Tesla or something like that. Now, um, one thing to know about uh, these tools is they are looking off your keyword here, which we put on the command line, Tesla. And, um, you know, there are multiple companies with Tesla in the name. There's like Tesla Research Lab or something like that in Sweden or something like that. So, um, you know, just be sure that when you get these ranges and you start seeing these sites, you can identify, oh, no, I might have gotten one that's uh, actually not Tesla Motors. And so um, both these tools, I verified, you know, pull up the right data for Tesla. So, but uh, yeah, just be cognizant of, you know, uh, since you're using a keyword here to search that you don't get other IP, IP ranges that are not your targets. You'll have to verify somewhat manually there. Okay, so we've gotten some IP space from the ASNs. We've gotten some seed domains. We wanna continue gathering as many seed domains as possible. So um, 
we have the AS number, and, and for here, we're going to use Twitch as an example again. Twitch, for, their autonomous system number is 46489. And, and here, what we want to do is um, we're going to get our first introduction to uh, a mass. And a mass is a framework for uh, domain intelligence, I would call it, I guess. And it is written by Jeff Foley. There is a workshop you should absolutely sign up for. He's going to do a full workshop on a mass and how to use it. Um, Jeff is uh, as associated to the Red Team Village, so super cool. Um, and here we're going to use a mass and feed it our autonomous system number, 46489. And what it's going to do is it's going to go out to all of the IP ranges that are um, represented by that autonomous system number. And it's going to scan the certificates for all HTTPS sites. And then it's going to parse those certificates and tell us, um, hey, here are the seed domains I found that are owned by them. And here you can see that we found some seed domains that we didn't know about before. Justin.tv, which is the company Twitch used to be. TTVNW.net, which is, I think, associated to Twitch's uh, streaming protocol. Um, Twitch.tv, obviously, which is their main site. TwitchCon, which is their conference. And SocialCam, which I have no idea what is. Um, so yeah, and all the links for these tools and the methods are you know posted in the slides, so you can uh, click through when the slides get released and uh, and go grab the tools and play with them on your own. So here we've already expanded our uh, we've already expanded our assessment a lot, right? We have a whole bunch of IP space, we have a whole bunch of top level domains, seed domains, um, and we have the seed domains already given to us by our brief page. Okay, so the next method is reverse who is. And what reverse who is is it'll take the who is entry of uh, you can you know search your domain twitch.tv here, and um, and you can do this with a lot of sites. I use huaxi.com um, because it's uh, pretty cheap and you can get a free API key for so many uses. And uh, you basically supply it your domain and it will give you the you know who is data and then you can use that who is data to correlate uh, you know who else has registered stuff. So an example here is we gave this site, huoxy.com, twitch.tv. And then uh, it said that over the course of the years, there have been uh, several companies' names related to the Whois data and also uh, registered uh, emails. And so here you can see that the company, uh, as of the you know March 26, 2015, was Justin justin.tv and the domain and the email in the domain was domain master justin.tv and then later in 2015 it changed to twitch interactive and if you click the button right next to those entries you can see there's 20 other domains still registered to justin.tv which could be interesting to us and there's 575 domains registered under twitch interactive and so we can start pulling back more data more subdomains more root domains from um, from these links when we click on them. Now, one thing to notice to know here is that who is data is is registered data, and so uh, a lot of these companies will park domains um, to combat phishing and um, and to hold stuff for marketing campaigns and stuff like that. So they might not be live sites; they might just be parsed. So this is a medium fidelity. Uh, type of technique here, but I have found some really good stuff using reverse who is uh, and the registrant data of, of these sites. There is a tool to, to do this type of analysis. It's called Domlink, written by Vincent Yu, Vice Security on Twitter. And um, it uses that uh, exact site, huoxi.com. Um, and you can basically give it a domain, and it will find every other associated domain by both registrant email and organization name or company name. Um, and it'll do it on the command line and return it to you in a script, and it's recursive. So a uh, really cool tool here. You can use this to automate some of that reverse who is. Uh, look up. It's called Domlink. The tool is called Domlink. So the next method that we have now that we've maybe gotten some more seeds and subdomains from Reverse Who Is, and we're building out, you know, our list of things that we can hack, is uh, we want to look at the ad and analytics relationships of our target site. And we want to see what other sites are using the same ad and analytics codes as our main site, and this will give us um, a good understanding of. Uh, maybe what are their most popular domains, and maybe what are some of their less popular domains but are still using the codes and we didn't know about before. Um, so every page usually embeds a Google Analytics code or a New Relic, you know, code or some kind of, you know, adder analytics code in the main page. And so here, if we use a site called builtwith.com, uh, we can search twitch.tv 
And twitch.tv, it'll give us a list under the relationship profile tab of all of the keys that are on twitch.com or twitch.tv, excuse me. And then you can click on those and see what other sites are using the same admin analytics codes. And maybe we didn't know about those before. So here we can, it's hard to see on the bottom, but um, we have a couple entries that we didn't know about before. Uh, man versus game.tv, uh, twitc.tv. Uh, we knew about twitchcon.com from the previous method, but we're starting to build up more uh, domains that uh, we can see that are related to um, our our target. So uh, admin analytics relationship profiles is a pretty powerful technique. Um, I have used it for success a couple times. You can also do this directly from Firefox or Chrome. They have an extension for this site called Built With, and you can just install it. Um, you make a free account, and then you visit your site in the browser, click the Chrome extension button, and it'll get you the relationship information right in your browser and you can start clicking around there so uh you know pretty easy to institute while you're you know doing your, your recon in a browser um so you can also use a tool to do this in the command line so uh malik uh after my first iteration of this talk uh quickly scripted up an awesome tool to do this um it's called git relationship.py and you just pass it your target here. Here he's targeted uber.com, uh, which also has a bounty program, and pass it to this Python script, and it'll pull out on the command line all of the related domains. And you'll have to manually kind of verify these, uh, but the ones I would look at first are the ones that actually have uber uh, in the, you know, in the domain somewhere, like, uh, you know, daftar uber or, you know, drive uber.co.nz or things like that. So um, you'll have to sift through this, but uh, you can do it on the command line now, too. Then you can just use some general Google hacking or Google foo to try to find uh, associated sites to your target. Um, you can use the copyright text, the terms of service, and the privacy policy. And you can just copy those from the bottom of any of the pages. And here you can see Twitch Interactive Inc. would be something I'd Google for. And then you can see any other page that is hosting you know, that text at the bottom of their page, which could be something that you didn't know about before um, in your, your recon so far. So uh, you can just do this manually and uh, it, you know, you can use other search operators like in URL Twitch, or you can just look for these policies. One tip here is that uh, you don't just want to target the certain, you know, a certain year, like here I have 2019, but you also want to check 2018 and 2017. And in fact, the more stuff you find that goes back uh, farther in age, the more likely it is to be vulnerable and less likely to have a lot of security assessment associated to it. So probably more vulnerable for your red team uh, engagement or your, your bug bounty. So, All right, the next method that we're going to use to find some seed domains or related infrastructure is Shodan. I have to admit, I'm not a Shodan ninja, but I know a lot of red teamers are, and uh, I actually love Shodan. It's just a failing of mine. I need to get better at it. But there's a ton of search operators we could use here on our domain twitch.tv. And what Shodan is, is it's, it's this site that is a, is a site that hosts information from an infrastructure-based spider. And a spider goes to every site on the internet and basically captures um, it's uh, HTTP responses, it's uh, technology stack, it's certificate data, um, and cross-links it so you can click on any of these pieces of information and find out other things it's seen related and, and what organizations it's related to and what, you know, what common tech that they're using, what web servers, what you know, JavaScript frameworks, you could do anything. So Shodan's a really powerful tool, um, and uh, you can query our domain here and try to find uh, try to find related infrastructure. For instance, in, in one of the entries when I just didn't even use a great operator here, I just searched my domain, twitch.tv, I ended up seeing in the SSL certificate data uh, of, of the search, there was twitch.amazon.eu. And uh, now I need to ask myself a question like, is that in scope, right? Like that's not verba verbatim a Twitch domain, but in a red team assessment, if that's related to Twitch infrastructure, well, maybe uh, maybe it's a target that I can go after. So Shodan can give you a lot of good information. Okay, so we found seed domains, um, stuff to start with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find subdomains for those seed domains. Um, and so these are these are things like uh, dub dub. You know, dub 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 is a subdomain, but also admin dot tesla dot com or uh, you know forums dot tesla dot com or something like that or forums dot twitch tv or whatever. We're going to try to find subdomains uh, and so. This idea of starting with seeds and then moving to subs uh, really is going to multiply. The more seeds you find, the more subdomain enumeration you can do, the more subdomains you find, or the more or, uh, is related to how many sites you find, the more sites you find, the more successful you'll be inside of your red team engagement or bug bounty program. 
uh, program. So for subdomain enumeration, um, I use you know three-ish uh, different methods to get subdomain information. One is linked in JavaScript discovery. Uh, another one is subdomain scraping techniques, and then subdomain brute force. And then there's some auxiliary stuff I, I use as well. So we're going to run into those right now. And this is the bulk of what a lot of tools are doing right now. Um, and, uh, and so you'll see a lot of favorites in these slides. So the first area we're going to use to find subdomain data is, uh, or the first technique is linked discovery and JavaScript discovery. So link discovery, what is it? It's basically using a web spider to visit a site like twitch.tv, um, land on it, and spider all the, the, the HTML links, right? Pretty simple, right? And any of those that come back with um, you know, a subdomain, uh, we just add to our list of, of in-scope targets, right? And so this is pretty self-explanatory. It happens naturally when you're using tools like Burp Suite and you're spidering a site. But I'm going to walk you through how I do it. Um, I'm going to use Burp 1.7 because I like the UI better, but it works as well in, with the crawler or the scanner in um, Burp 2.0. So, uh, you know, use whatever you want. And then I'm going to give you some other methods to do it. So the first thing we do is uh, we load up Burp Suite, which is on the right here. It's uh, side by side to our site. And we just visit our site through Burp Suite the proxy. And Burp Suite the proxy will capture all this data. We've only visited one page. If you visit twitch.tv ever, <laughs> you see that uh, it has cross-linked and it does request a lot of stuff because uh, it's a streaming media site. And so there's a lot of stuff going in the background when you go to twitch.tv. Um, so you can see all that data on the right-hand side. This is everything that's either seen, link seen, been linked on this page, or it's actually been requested. Actually been requested is the stuff in black. Seen is the stuff that's in gray. Um, and so what you do is you visit your page. And then you have to set up a rule, uh, some type of rule. And you, uh, you can do this by going into the Target tab and the Scope tab. And then you click this box that says Use Advanced Scope Control. And what I do is I enter in just a keyword here in Advanced Scope Control, which I just say Twitch, right? So I want to see in Burp anything that has Twitch in the URL at all, no matter where it is. It has that word Twitch. And you could also add some more here, because we've seen in our previous analysis, TWT uh, is also part of their domain naming uh, nomenclature, right? Uh, and so you can add a couple of these scope rules. And then you go back to your site map, and you click on the, the ribbon bar up at top, or the filter bar. And then you say, uh, show only in scope items. So now this will just show in our site map the, all the twitch.tv links, right? So we already have a good, link, a good list of subdomains here, right? Sentinel twitchservice.net, api.twitch.tv. You know, so we have a lot of stuff with Twitch in the name here. We know that most of this is probably related to Twitch. This gives us exponential uh, areas to hack, right? And this is pretty good. But if we select all these and then we spider them with Burp using Burp Spider, it will then go to all of them and find their links and find subdomains references in their pages. And we can do this recursively until there's nothing left to find. So here I'm going to select all of these. And then I'm going to spider them. And now you can see, uh, since I had them selected, everything in orange on the right-hand side was stuff I knew about before I spidered. And then after I spidered with Burp, uh, everything in white is new stuff. And you can see I found a combination of a lot of stuff here. I found subdomains for twitch.tv. And I've also found some new root and seed domains, like twitchapp.net and twitchservice.net. And ext-twitch.tv. Um, so this is a hybrid technique. It can find you new seed domains or roots and subdomains. And so now I have all of this you know, domain data. I can now select all of these and spider them again and spider those pages for links. And eventually, you can do this until you get kind of spider fatigue. Um, and eventually, you'll have a large sitemap buildup of targets, which is awesome. Now, how do you get this data out of Burp Suite? Um, there's not a great way to do this. Uh, Pro has a thing called uh, engagement tools. And in engagement tools, you can do this thing called analyze target. And in, in analyze target, you can create an HTML, port, uh, an HTML report of all the targets in your site tree uh, that are selected. So that's what I do. I select everything in the site tree. I go engagement tools, analyze target, generate HTML report. And then in the HTML report, I have a parsable list of the domains that it's seen at the beginning of that HTML report. And then I take that and I put it in a text file for later analysis. And then I dump it into my mind map as well. OK, so um, the whole the whole linked discovery thing counts on Burp Spider, right? A lot of times I hadn't seen you know, before the last couple of years 
great options to do this in the command line because you know it will re require a lot of custom coding, um, you know, bash scripting or Python to create my own spider and do that same process. Well, now there does exist some tools that are command line spiders uh, with bug hunters and red teamers in mind. There's two. There's one called Ghost Spider, written by Jesse JJJ, um, and it also designates the types of things it's parsing when it's visiting a, a URL. So it'll give you. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear me. Head, headphone problems, I'm gonna plug it in. You I can know. hear you. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, I was getting beeping in my ear, so maybe it's just running batteries, my bad. Okay, so um, so you have two spiders here that you can use in the command, like Ghost Spider uh, and Hack Crawler by Hack Luke. And uh, both these are awesome. Um, they both have some functionality uh, that will parse out the types of things you're getting, like JavaScript files, uh, subdomains, URL endpoints, um, some of them will give you, I think, parameter names and, and stuff like that. So uh, you could institute the whole process of link discovery by scripting up um, Ghost Spider or Hack Crawler if you wanted. I still use Burp, um, but these are invaluable tools to have at your disposal, just like a crawler that can do some analysis. Um, so keep them bookmarked uh, for when you might need them. Okay, so the next place we're going to get subdomain information um, is by analyzing um, some JavaScript. And one of the tools I like here, just because it has this kind of little added benefit that I think that I haven't seen many places before, but maybe some other tools are starting to implement it now, is a tool called Subdomainizer by uh, Niraj Edwards. And um, what it'll do is it'll take a JavaScript file, you have to point it to a JavaScript file, and it will parse out all the cloud services, the subdomains, um, and it'll do this little extra thing where it uses the Shannon entropy formula or algorithm to identify things that look like API keys hard-coded in JavaScript, which is already kind of a vulnerability if you find a private API key or credential um, hard-coded in JavaScript, which I know sounds crazy to a lot of people. Like you would just find a hard-coded private API key, but this happens all the time. Like all the time it happens. Um, and so this uh, this is what I like to call like a forward thinking type of thing is using like an algorithm like this to identify keys. Sometimes it's a little noisy, um, but a lot of times it finds you good stuff. So uh, so I like this tool to point at all the JavaScript files I found already, you know, on you know on some of these sites. Um, if you're just looking for subdomain information, there's another tool called Subscraper by Celian Collins, which has recursion uh, built into it, which uh, can do this method as well, but it doesn't do the API key part. So point this at JavaScript files you find on your site, and you can get back a whole bunch of, um, of uh, subdomains and cloud, uh, cloud services that the site might use or the target might use. All right, so that's link discovery and JavaScript analysis um, for subdomains. Now uh, we're going to get into the big meat of what like a lot of people do is subdomain scraping. Now the idea of subdomain scraping um, is going out to these websites on the internet uh, that have search boxes, basically. So um, you know, there's all these projects on the internet, search engines, security websites, certificate like projects and stuff like that. They all do different stuff, right? So census or like Rob Text gives you infrastructure information. The Wayback Machine, you know, houses information about domains and their responses, you know, years past. And you know, everyone's probably used the Wayback Machine. Um, the certificate sources down here, some of them are certificate projects to provide certificate transparency. Search engines, obviously you know what search engines are. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of security sites that you know do different things like give you uh, a rating on how malicious a URL or a site might be, right? The common thing that these all have is either have an API or a search box where you can put in a domain and they will search that domain and they will tell you anything they've seen related to that domain. And if you put in a domain like tesla.com, the information that comes back is parsable and you could possibly find out that they know about some subdomains of tesla.com that we don't know about. So this is a process of subdomain scraping. We're going to go to all of these sources, all of these sources, and ask them, hey, what do you know about tesla.com or twitch.tv? Do you know of any subdomains that maybe I don't know of? 
Okay, cool. Let's do that. Now, um, there are many more sources that are on this page, right? There's uh, These are only a subset, and new sources to parse are coming out as fast as new websites are coming out. So the tools have to keep up um, adding new uh, novel sources to find subdomain data or URL data um, you know, as they, as they mature. Now, this is the example of using a search engine like Google to do it, right? So here, what we're doing is we're searching uh, with the search operator site.twitch.tv, and we're saying, I already know about www.twitch.tv, so we're saying minus www.twitch.tv, and we already know about watch.twitch.tv, so minus watch.twitch.tv and minus dev.twitch.tv, because we already know about that. So now, Google's only showing us things that are not those. And so we can do this process, keep on minusing out domains until Twi until Google doesn't know anything more about subdomains related to twitch.tv. And, um, and that way we can uh, basically get a full inventory of what Google knows and what Google knows about subdomains for twitch.tv. So this is the, an example of doing it manually with Google, but luckily you don't have to do this yourself. There's tools out there that will do this type of analysis, the scraping for you. The first one is Amass by Jeff Foley and the Amass team. There's a whole team behind um, this. And there's two tools I use here, Amass and Subfinder, but we're going to look at Amass first. Um, Amass has uh, probably the most sources uh, for any subdomain scraping tool in existence in its enum section, right? Amass is a framework for domain information, but the one that actually pulls this method's uh, results, subdomain scraping, is called Amass enum. And here on the right-hand side, you could say we, we gave it twitch.tv and it went out to a whole bunch of sources it's had in its databases and it reached out to their web pages on the, you know, using curl or, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know if they use like headless chromium. I don't know exactly what they're using. Um, and then they parse those pages for subdomains for twitch.tv and they give us a list of all the subdomains for twitch.tv. Um, and if we do this on all of our seed domains that we've gathered, we have now started to exponentially uh, build out the amount of sites that we have to attack. So uh, this tool is uh, invaluable. Uh, Amass is becoming the go-to tool for all subdomain um, enumeration, uh, especially this, uh, this thing, subdomain scraping. The other tool I use here is, uh, oh, also this is still Amass. What Amass does at the end of a run, not only does it give you all the subdomains, but it also gives you this great table, which I feel like is underutilized a little bit. And this table tells you, okay, I discovered 439 subdomains, and here is where they were inside of these ASNs. And um, you can see that most of Twitches were in Amazon's ranges, which makes sense because they were acquired by Amazon, but you can see some of them were in other uh, ASNs, right? And I've had instances where, not on Twitch, but on uh, on other projects, where there was a whole ASN related to the company I didn't know about that I found out because Amass built this table. They're like, hey, you know, 70 of these subdomains we discovered appeared in this ASN or these IP ranges. And then I look at that and I'm like, oh, I I wasn't initially looking at those ranges. Weird. Let's go back to the beginning of my workflow and start enumerating those ranges. So this table is... Um, super cool. It also gives you information on uh, on their third party um, kind of tools they're using. Like uh, here, you can see that uh, you know Twitch uh, Twitch is using Bitly and SendGrid and, and some other stuff. So it also gives you information there and Fastly. So yeah. Okay, the other tool I use for subdomain scraping is Subfinder. Uh, originally written by Iceman and Michael Skelton, I think, now man navigated to the project discovery.io team, which is a group of bug hunters releasing some stellar tools. Um, and uh, they also have multiple sources, extensible output, um, also a really great tool. Uh, both of these tools are really good. They have some, each one of them have different sources. So what I end up doing is, is in my automation, I run both of them and then I cat the output together and sort it and unique it. Um, from both the tools. So uh, they both have different, you know, a couple of different sources and a lot of the same sources. So uh, that's what I do for my stuff is I just use both of them. Okay, so this one is somewhat new um, and it has been integrated into a mass uh, a little bit, um, but uh, uh, I've had inconsistency with run between this standalone tool, uh, GitHub subdomains.py, and the output of a mass. So I still use this independently inside of my automation when I'm when I'm looking for subdomains. So 
Uh, this tool is called GitHub subdomains.py, and it's still scraping. And what this is doing is it's going out to GitHub as a source. And basically, you're providing GitHub. Uh, and if you've ever been on GitHub, they have the search box up top. And you're saying, uh, search for twitch.tv. And then anything that comes back with twitch.tv as a piece of source code, it will par parse out the subdomains from that piece of sor source code. Um, now, this uh, this was written by uh, Gwendo Lekuik. And um, I, I still don't know if I'm saying Gwendo's name. Right, and but that's okay. Uh, and um, Gwendol uh, wrote a whole suite of tools for GitHub enumeration, um, how to find secret keys in GitHub related to an organization, how to pull email addresses out. Um, he has a wonderful blog, and uh, it's linked here in this slide um, with a whole bunch of GitHub tools. Now, GitHub subdomains is just looking for subdomains. Um, the thing about using this tool is that the GitHub API, not the tool, um, is just kind of unstable and, and doesn't give you like somewhat returns rate limited results sometimes. So what I do inside of my op auto, uh, automation, and this has given me subdomains I haven't found anywhere else using this method, is I run GitHub search or GitHub subdomains.py um, like five times. And I sleep in between each run so that I give it a little while for the rate limiting to die down. Um, and then I give it a big sleep at the end before I run another one. And then uh, that seems, and then I cat all those results together and unique them. And that seems to give me more consistency um, when parsing the API. And it has nothing to do with the tool that Gwendol wrote. It's, it's all about what GitHub does uh, with their search API. So um, this is an awesome tool to find lesser known subdomains. And I found some great stuff using, using this tool. Okay, the next one is, uh, shub, is uh, sh show sub go. Um, by Incogbyte, and uh, this one will parse uh, using a number of search operators with your API key. It'll parse um, Showdown. So uh, I include this in my uh, script as well. Um, again, this is one of those tools that some of the subdomain frameworks like Amass and, um, and Subfinder might do for you. Um, I find uh, using the standalone tool for some reason just works better for me. So I don't know exactly why that is, but I've run them side by side and gotten different outputs. So I still use this um, verbatim. And it's also, it's, it's a fast running script. It's not like I'm waiting for it to complete for five, 10 minutes or something like that. It usually runs in a minute or two. So it doesn't, it's no skin off my nose if I have to wait an extra couple minutes to ensure that I get coverage out of Shodan. So uh, show sub go will take a domain and your Shodan API key and parse Shodan using some search operators and give you back all the subdomains related to here, twitch.tv. OK, so the last, well, not the last, but one of the other methods to uh, look for subdomain enumeration or subdomain scraping is the cloud ranges, right? So we talked about this a little bit earlier, is that we have like all this IP space. And now we've started to identify subdomains. And you'll notice that some of those subdomains are resolving to infrastructure or sites in the cloud. Um, now, there's this idea that not a lot of people had been doing is just going out uh, recently, or not recently, but uh, people have been doing it for a while, but it hasn't been much public, is just scanning the entire ranges for AWS, GCP, and Azure for SSL sites, right? Anything that responds to, um, anything that responds to, uh, you know, or responds to a connection on 443. And you basically scan the cloud ranges, and you you scan it by IP uh, IP address, and then when it responds, it'll give you its SSL certificate, and then you parse the organization name or the domain name out of the certificate data. And then you look at that data, and you say, does it match my target twitch.tv, or does it have the keyword Twitch in it? And you're like, cool, I found some stuff that these people have put in the cloud that wasn't part of their ASN that I probably didn't know about before. Um, now, that's a tremendous amount of scanning, right? Those ranges are huge. Uh, and you can do it yourself with some tools like mass scan and you can script it up yourself to scan. Um, but, um, and there's a guide here by Dahi Park, which outlines doing it yourself, scanning those ranges, but it's gonna cost you a little bit of money on your VPS that you're using, et cetera. There's a service by Sam Erb um, and a DEF CON talk he did two years ago where he created a service called bufferover.run. It's an API and you can give it a domain and it will go out and he does this scanning um, every once in a while. And so. Uh, you basically take that data, uh, you parse it, and then you get a list of, uh, of subdomains that were in the cloud ranges. Now, um, I think he runs his scans every two weeks and updates the service, so it's not exactly live data. Um, and 
this is one of the sources included in a mass. Um, again, uh, I just wanted to outline the single shot tool here. You probably could feel safe using a mass to get most of this data back, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you can use a service as well. So um, this method also finds some really good stuff, right? A lot of people are putting shadow IT infrastructure and registering websites on a credit card or you know, uh, just not paying attention or thinking that anybody will find their cloud infrastructure because they've never published you know, those domains anywhere other than internally. Um, and so you can find a lot of things you know, for your target organization that are just sitting in the cloud pretty much unsecured. In fact, it's been a, a big part of my research lately is scanning the cloud ranges and just finding wickedly under secured stuff because people just don't think you'll ever find it. So this is a good method. All right, so we've scraped a lot of stuff to find subdomains. Now we want to brute force for subdomains. Um, this is just a you know a tried and true method that I'm sure every red team or pen tester has done before, usually with a tool like Fierce or you know one of the other tools like that in the past 10 years. Um, you just try to give a word out of a dictionary and add it before your company, dot company dot com and see if it resolves, right? It's pretty, pretty simple method. Um, now iteration in this field has come along in the last four years um, where you know a lot of our the tools that we were using to do this were great but they were using one DNS resolver one uh, one DNS server to resolve and it took a long time I remember running fierce as a pen tester you know 10 years ago and it just taking so long to finish a large dictionary to do subdomain brute forcing and uh, in the last you know I think four years uh, this uh, the idea of using multiple resolvers to speed up the process was pioneered by MassDNS. And uh, MassDNS was the king for a little while. Now, a mass uh, also includes uh, the idea of using multiple resolvers. So, a mass uses eight DNS resolvers um, uh, to, um, to parse DNS data when it brute forces by default. Um, and you can add even more um, by using um, some flags. So uh, here we're just running a mass over, you know, Twitch again, and we're doing brute forcing this time uh, with the with the dash brute option, and then we're adding the source so we can see uh, where some of these came from um, with the scraping part, and then you can specify the number of resolvers with um, dash rf. So rf means resolver file, I think, and res uh, if you basically give it a list of DNS resolvers or DNS servers that you trust it will use more than one to do your, uh, your brute forcing. So this speeds up your brute forcing significantly. Um, I've also heard that uh, another alternative to using a mask for this is uh, AS DNS brute. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I've heard it's also wicked fast and has multiple resolvers. So if you wanted an alternative. Um, Shuffle DNS by the project discovery team also does this. It's, I think it's a wrapper around mass DNS. Um, it is, it is a wrapper around mass DNS. And, um, uh, if you prefer to break out that type of brute force from a mass for whatever reason, whether it's stability or a mass, you know, is taking too long for you. I, I, I haven't benchmarked the tools side by side, but a lot of people like shuffle DNS as well to do subdomain brute forcing. So a subdomain brute force tool is only as good as the dictionary or word list you give it, right? Because it's just trying to resolve a whole bunch of words in front of your target, right? Twitch.tv. And uh, so in this mind, there's there's two kind of ways that you can approach what word list you feed to these tools. One is a tailored word list um, where you can build one based off of words that appear, brand names that appear, um, word, you know, you can build like a contextual based word list to uh, to your target, um, which Tom Nom Nom, who's a prolific bug hunter, awesome human, have a lot of respect for this guy and the tools he makes and the contributions he makes to the community. Um, he did a talk at NahamCon, which is a conference uh, a little while ago now, a couple months ago, where he did a whole talk on word lists and how to generate contextual word lists for your targets. So I suggest going to watch that if you want to make some tailored word lists. It's called Who, What, When, Where Word List. Um, and then you can also use a massive word list. And so over the years, we've had many, many tools that do DNS brute forcing. I went out and I took the word list for all of them and put them into uh, one and it's called all.txt. It's linked in this presentation. People use it, it's on my GitHub. Um, and it, it basically sort and uniques all of the DNS uh, names that you've seen forever. Now it has a lot of crap in it. it, it's true. It's a lot of lines, it's like a million or two million, I can't remember, it's a ton. With 
using you know the multiple resolvers, it actually doesn't take too long to do the brute forcing. Um, I don't necessarily care if I'm sending crap to a DNS resolver like uh, you know like zero 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 one dot twitch .tv. Like obviously that's usually not going to resolve, but uh, uh, the list has some gems in it that I just can't get past. You you know like um, its efficacy. So uh, I use all dot txt when I'm doing subdomain brute forcing, and I think it's pretty good. There are some newer school pieces of research to pull out uh, subdomain enumeration, right? Those, that file um, that I made parsed out all of the kind of subdomain brute forcing tools that had existed for the last, you know, 10 years or something like that and put them into one file. But there is some new research by the team at AssetNote, which is a which is a attack surface mapping company. And uh, they did some cool research using uh, Google BigQuery to uh, generate and discover subdomains that were used on like the Alexa top 10 or Alexa top 1000 or 10,000 or something like that, or Reddit, or anytime someone referenced a URL on Reddit, what was the subdomain in that link or um, Stack Overflow. Anytime someone referenced a URL on Stack Overflow, they parsed these sites with BigQuery and then they made these or these uh, subdomain list that you can use. So they call this project the Common Speak project. I've integrated Common Speak 1 into the list all.txt, but Common Speak 2 came out a couple years ago. It's not an all.txt. Um, it's got some other sites that they decided to target. I recommend checking it out for kind of newer school, you know, research on what subdomains uh, names look like. Then there's this idea of alteration scanning. Um, this is a type of brute forcing. So you have dev.company.com, but you could also have dev1, dev2, or dev-1, or dev.1.company.com. And so uh, this technique was pioneered by Shubs and Nafi when they wrote a tool called AltDNS. It's now been um, this permutation or alteration scanning, whatever you want to call it, um, has been built into a mass. So uh, you, can, uh, you can use a mass, and it will try to find these naming conventions for you. Um, and, uh, and it will sometimes give you gold uh, because people name stuff predictably in their subdomains. Um, some of the things I've done with permutation scanning is, uh, is bypassing web location firewalls. So um, where I've had SQL injection on a main target um, and getting blocked by like a web application firewall, I've managed to find a permutation like www2 and then managed to bypass the firewall because it wasn't applied to uh, www2. Um, I've also managed to bypass things like Akamai by finding their origin via predictably named alterations uh, like origin-sub or origin.subdomain to bypass filtering to go to the source. So these are uh, some things you can use that origin scanning to, to do, as well as just find you know, new surface to attack. All right, so now we're going to go into some other stuff that's related to wide scope Rion. We have seed domains. We've got a lot of seed domains, a lot of subdomains right now, and we should have a pretty good map of um, of the infrastructure that belongs to this company. All right, so one that I didn't talk about, and this is new to this specific talk, that's why I called it 4.002, is favicon analysis. So there is this idea that every page in the tab uh, at the top of your browser has a favicon, right? You see that little Tesla in the bottom left-hand corner of my Chrome tab? That's a favicon. Now, um, Favicons uh, are little images, and what you can do is you can take a hash of that favicon, and then you can search for the hash of the favicon on Shodan. And Shodan will then show you every other site that has that favicon, which will find you some gems because people tend to reuse favicons on a lot of their sites of domains you might not have seen before. Um, there are some newer tools to do this. I used to do this a lot in my recon testing. I then took it out. Uh, for a little while and I have recently put it back in. So favicon analysis is kind of a fringe technique, um, but it's pretty cool. So there's a new tool called Fav Freakout by uh, Devnash uh, Batham. Um, They're at Twitter at Asmodeus. And um, basically he does a couple things here. He parses from Shodan. Um, he'll, also, uh, he'll also look for hashes uh, in different places, but he also uses the hash. Um, he also has hashes for common infrastructure, like a scanner would, um, to look for different types of infrastructure. So on the bottom right-hand side, you can see that he has some uh, fingerprints uh, on different types of things, like Spring Boot pages, or Big IP pages, or Slack instances. They all have common favicons. And so when you scan 
a list of URLs or a, a set of um, domains on port 80 or 443 and you retrieve their favicon and their hash matches one of those hashes, you know, oh shoot, I've stumbled upon a Slack instance for this organization. Um, and you may not have uh, you know, found that doing anything else. You can also do um, the same thing if you scan the cloud and you, you correlate one of the previous techniques with this one. Let me find things that have my domain and the certificate data and have these favicon hashes associated to them. So this is a fringe kind of analysis technique um, to find even more um, kind of esoteric uh, related uh, you know, sites. Okay, so then we're gonna go back to a tried and true uh, method is port scanning, right? We have a lot of domains now. We have a lot of C domains and subdomains and sites that we can work with. Um, we want to port scan them because they may have services that are not 80 or 443 on these pieces of infrastructure. And so um, the, you know, the tried and true hacker education, hacker education will tell you to use Nmap here. Um, but I use MassScan because I believe it's faster. It has a uh, rewritten TCP IP stack, true multi-threading. It's written in C, you know. Uh, directly calls, you know, a lot of stuff. So um, MassScan, in my experience, has been faster than using Nmap, even with flags like min parallelism, which there was a huge debate on Twitter the other day of which is faster, min parallelism or using MassScan, and people are like, whatever. When I run, uh, when I run a scanning tool, a port scanning tool across, you know, four hundred thousand hosts, uh, I have always found MassScan and its uh, its syntax, its uh, its advantages to beat out Nmap. So. That's just my personal experience. If you really like Nmap to do this, you totally can. And this is strictly for finding ports. It's not to do service scanning, right? Nmap obviously wins in those areas. If you're going to do um, banner analysis, service scanning, script scanning, like that all that all pans down. MassScan only does one thing, finds open ports. That's it. Um, so what I do, uh, or also, if you want to learn how to use MassScan, Daniel Meisler, one of my best friends in the whole world, um, he wrote a study guide on MassScan and all of its syntax. It's one of the best ones I've seen, even better than the man page. So go check that out and how to use MassScan um, and how to set the flags correctly and, and you know how to scan. Um, so, so what I do is I'll take MassScan and then the problem about MassScan is it only scans uh, IP addresses. It won't scan a domain name. Um, so you can use a tool called DN MassScan, which will convert your domains that we have, right? We have subdomains and seed domains, and it'll convert them into IP addresses and then scan them with MassScan and tell you all the open ports on each IP address. So what I do is I take MassScan and I scan that over all of my subdomains, and then I feed that output, because I know it's open, to Nmap to do service scanning. And service scanning will start to give me uh, more information on the services that are open on those boxes. And then what I do is I do a quick default credential spray across everything that has certain services open, which is FTP, SMTP, SSH, Telnet, any type of SQL database, uh, basic authorization, and some other stuff. And so this is a tool that I used to do that. It's called Brute Spray. Um, Brute Spray will take the output of your Nmap scan. So you feed mass scan to Nmap. Nmap does the full service scan and outputs an XML file. And then you feed that XML file to Brute Spray to do a quick credential, default credential brute force against um, all of the services that allow you to do that. And so I found some, some good wins uh, doing this, logging straight into SQL databases and SSH and it just, just some horrible stuff that people leave unsecured on the internet, so on services. All right, um, so while I'm doing all of this stuff, right, we're in kind of the other category right now. So while I'm doing all of this analysis, and, and I have most of this automated in a giant ugly shell script that I, I use, and we'll talk about recon frameworks in a second. But while I'm doing all this, it takes a little while for these tools to run. You know, the conglomeration of tools and techniques we've already talked about takes anywhere between five and 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more if, if I have a lot of uh, subdomains or that's a big project it'll take to run all of these tools and give me output. So while I'm doing this, um, I do a technique called GitHub dorking. And, and this has found me many, many great things. Um, and uh, what, what you do is you basically just go to GitHub and type in your domain as a search operator. So twitch.tv, right? And you go to GitHub and you type in twitch.tv and then you just start browsing source code that has reference twitch.tv or tesla.com or whatever, teslamotors.com. And you can find all kinds of sensitive data that former employees or current employees um, have accidentally put on GitHub. And so uh, I have built a script just to build these search queries for me, these dorks, I call them. And it's right here in, in a gist. You can grab it. 
Um, and it looks for things like my domain, twitch.tv that I'm looking at right now, and password, or uh, N NPMRC auth, or Docker config, or PEM private for certificates, or um, S3 config, or HT password, or credentials, or bash RC profiles, or SSH configs. Um, and so it searches these key terms along with the domain. And if it comes up that someone has accidentally um, you know, put this on GitHub, it's usually automatically a finding, and it'll help me get into other systems. Let me give you an example here of something that happened in the real world. Um, I found an admin page for a site. Uh, I couldn't do anything with it. You know, I, I fuzzed the, uh, the form. Great, didn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Then I found uh, some dude who had uh, basically posted a password, not for that specific site, but it was related to my domain on GitHub for some other system. That system was internal, so I couldn't access it. But then I tried to use that password and username on this admin portal I had found that I had no luck before. Bam, got in, stole credit cards, millions of you know records of data. It was game over at that point. So, um, so this can can help. There's a whole awesome. Uh, talk here called uh, GitHub Recon and Sensitive Data Exposure on Bug Crowd University by the gentleman. It's probably the best primer on doing this type of dorking to find sensitive stuff on GitHub that I've ever seen. Uh, I highly recommend you check that out. And then Gwendol also rolled, uh, wrote a GitHub search tool that allows you to do this in the command line and not in the browser, which is Okay, so uh, now you have a bunch of uh, subdomains, and I think I'm running close to time, so I'm going to try to hurry it up here. Um, you have a bunch of subdomains here, and now we want to prioritize which ones we test, right? So what you can do is feed all of your subdomains to a tool that does screenshotting, and um, there are several tools that do this. Currently, I use uh, Eyewitness. I was using Aquatone. I go back and forth, uh, but there's four tools here, Aquatone, HTTP Screenshot, Eyewitness, and Witness Me. Um, all are tools that help you take screenshots. And then some do like additional analysis um, on your domains that you feed it. But more normally, I just use them for screenshotting. Doesn't matter which one you use. Try them out. See which one you like. I like Eyewitness. Um, I feed it a list of domains. It will, take, uh, it will take those domains, visit them with the headless browser, take a screenshot of the page. And then I will just look at that folder and see, OK, which one of these you know, looks like I want to prioritize first? Is it, you know, does it look like it redirects to the main site? Well, obviously, I'm not looking for the main site right now. Is you know, it some kind of back-end admin portal? OK, I want to prioritize that. So uh, screenshots can help you prioritize your work. Um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're given a large list of subdomains like you have now, you can start to look for some vulnerabilities. One is subdomain takeover. Um, there's a repo called Can I Take Over XYZ by Ed Overflow, and it gives you a list of um, all of these services and their fingerprints um, that might indicate that you can take over that subdomain. I'm not going to go crazy into subdomain takeover uh, because it's short on time, obviously. Um, but you can use a tool to check for subdomain takeovers. The best one right now is Nuclei um, and Subover, I think, are my, my two favorites right now. Subover was an independent tool has been since ported over into the Nuclei framework that uh, Project Discovery is making. But um, go check out Nuclei. It has the most uh, the most subdomain takeover uh, checks that I've seen for any tool. And um, I would check that out. And you can run it just across a list of large domains. And it'll tell you, hey, possible subdomain takeover at this address. So uh, this is another wide scope tool that I use in, in the end part of my recon when I have all these subdomains. And you can find uh, some vulns just straight off of, of using this. OK, so we're going to blow through automation real quick. OK, so when you, when you have some of the tools and you know you have a long methodology like I have, you end up automating it, right? I, I write a horrible bash script to do my stuff. Um, it, it works for me, uh, but it could be better. Um, some of the tools that I use don't do certain things. Like they're not threaded. They're, uh, they don't take certain types of inputs, like list inputs or um, glob notation like Nmap does or range notation like Nmap does. And sometimes I need to feed a tool with another tool. And so I can't, I can't do that. Um, so Michael Skelton, also known as Kadingo, wrote a tool called Interlace, which basically wraps around other tools and lets them do those things. It will thread them. It'll allow you to take different sources of input. Um, it'll allow you to distribute tools. Here is an example of a, a blog written by Hackloop, which talks about uh, basically threading Nikto, which Nikto doesn't support um, inter or inherent threading. So 
uh, you can use uh, interlace to um, basically glue together a lot of stuff that your other tools don't do. Any tool written by Tom Nom Nom is awesome in automation, right? HTTP probe, Wayback URLs, Meg. Um, Tom Nom Nom has several talks out there talking about his tools and how they work. Um, I use HTTP probe a lot for the glue between me finding subdomains, uh, and you feed it a, a lot of subdomains that you have found after your initial analysis, and then it tells you which ones have actual live listening um, web servers associated to them. So that's HTTP probe. Uh, Wayback URLs will find you URLs associated to any um, old URLs associated to any uh, site that you're currently looking at. Meg is like a directory brute forcer, but for many hosts, and I use this to find some, some stuff too. So all of Tom Nom Nom's uh, tools are just amazing. All right, last part, I promise. Uh, Omar, are we okay to, to finish this last little bit? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, so maybe recon is not your thing, right? I definitely run into hackers who are like, this is the most boring part of assessment to me. And then I, I run into other people who are like, yeah, recon is awesome. It's like my favorite part of the assessment. So it could be that recon is not really your thing. Finding all these sites is not your thing. Hacking the sites is more your thing. Um, and that's cool. There are a lot of new tools out here uh, these days that um, basically automate all this for you. And they're called recon frameworks. Um, so if you've ever looked at a video game before, uh, you know, like um, like Diablo, right? Every once in a while, like content creators will make these tiers of builds for Diablo or something like that. So I put recon frameworks into a couple of tiers, C tier, B tier, A tier, and S tier. C tier are recon frameworks that are built around scripting up other tools in Bash or Python. Um, they're step based they don't really have a workflow. They only have a few techniques and they're not really super extensible, but they work really well. Let me put out a, a big disclaimer here. My tools that I use personally on all bug hunts are C tier tools the, the, and they work for what I want and they do and they're great. Uh, so there's nothing that's bad to say about a C tier tool. Uh, a B tier tool in my mind, and this is all very rough, right? Like, you know, these classifications are not in any way um, like super serious, but a B tier tool in my mind um, has, you know, some of its own modules it's doing, some of its own sources, maybe has a GUI, maybe has some workflow in it where they're bringing data in from the end of the recon process back to the beginning if they find new stuff. Um, it has more techniques than a C tier. It runs, but it still runs that point in time and it's still working on flat files to track the data um, for recon. Uh, a tier is uh, maybe writing all of their own modules. Has these tools start to have some GUIs? Some of them, they run uh, iteratively. So they're like, you know, like cron or something like that. They'll run at a schedule and they start to manage things via database so you can compare scans and recon scans over time. And then S tier are kind of the highest level of what's out right now. Um, they write a lot of their own modules. They have a GUI. They run iteratively. They manage all their data via database. They scale across multiple boxes to make the scanning faster. They send alerts back to the user via email and text and Slack and whatever uh, when they find new things. They have some novel techniques that not a lot of other people are doing. So these are how I classify some of the frameworks. I'm going to show some of them to you now, and you can pick one that works for you if you're not into this recon stuff. Warning. I had to put this in here. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, right? Like I am scaling some tools and giving them grades. It's not serious. It's my rough experience, my gut feel. Um, all these tools are wonderful and I respect the authors of them so darn much of just putting code out there. It's, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about the people that uh, open source their code and even C2, like I said, my tool is a C tier tool so and it works for me. So um, this is just subjective and based off my own experience. Okay, so see some C2 tools that you could look into that are wrapping around a lot of uh, a lot of other existing tools. Um, the one of the ones recon uh, one of the ones called Ultimate Recon here I like um, is listed here. And the reason I like Ultimate Recon is because it's using the new Nuclei scanner that's out by Project Discovery, and it will uh, it implements finding subdomains using a couple of different tools. It will then take all of those, it will port scan them, and then it will run Nuclei templates on them. So it's a uh, it's pretty good. I like it. All of these different C tier tools can, you know, they're all choosing their own tools to wrap around that they like. So there's there's no best one really, but um, I I tend to like Ultimate Recon in this, you know, one. There's also um, there's like other other good ones in here too. So uh, check these out. B tier frameworks. This is uh, Lazy Recon by Captain Milo, um, and here you can see his workflow. Uh, very similar to what we talked about in this presentation. A mass and subfinder. Combine those two. You get a final subdomain count. 
Then you start to do some vulnerability analysis with Subjack and Core Scanner to find some vulnerabilities related around subdomain takeover and uh, cores vulnerabilities. Then you start uh, brute forcing. Um, then you start port scanning. Then you do some screenshots, um, and then you have a final uh, you have a final output. Um, so a lot of the stuff we talked about today is implemented inside of this workflow. So lazy recon is one I like to point out inside of uh, the B tier here. Uh, a tier, there's a couple. Um, they all teeter on being S tier, right? Like I I I wonder if I should even really have like an S tier and an A tier. Um, usually the thing that's separating some of these is GUI from the other ones. So the one I have referenced here on this slide is called Find Domain. And Find Domain does pretty much everything. It, it does subdomain discovery and scraping and brute force and all of that um, via a mass and subfinder and asset finder and everything. And then it stores it in a database. It does iterative scanning. It'll text you. If it finds new domains from its last scan, it'll email you, which you see in the bottom left-hand corner, um, which is great. Uh, the only thing it lacks is a GUI. Um, it's it's a command line based tool. So you know it kind of teeters on doing a lot of the stuff we want to do. But um, and in the enterprise version, it does port scanning and screenshots, and um, it's a that version is a for pay version, but it's affordable to bounty hunters, and some some of those are, are really good subscriptions to pay for. So find domain, pretty cool. Okay, here's our S tier framework. Some of them you'll never get to use uh, because they're commercial products, but I include them here to give people ideas as to like what they should be working towards in their frameworks. Intrigue.io is a asset discovery tool written by Jonathan Cran, who's a friend of mine. Um, he uh, he builds Intrigue and he has a GUI for it and it's a SaaS platform and businesses buy it to map their attack surface, but it's doing the same techniques that we've talked about today. Um, the cool thing about Intrigue is even if you don't pay for the subscription of, um, you know, like the SaaS version that he's selling to businesses, he open sources almost all of the code for Intrigue.io. So you can run a, you know, your own hosted version or at least see what he's doing and his kind of analysis. So Intrigue is pretty cool. Asset Note is another one that's um, a B2B type play for Recon, right? Um, it's a team of former bug hunters who made this awesome platform. This is probably the gold standard of uh, of asset management or attack surface management tools. You can see that it's it's pretty. It breaks things up by you know assets that need attention. It's got a lot of graphing. Um, it does a lot of custom vulnerability checking. Uh, so asset note is is probably it's S tier, but you know it's a high price tag. So you're probably not going to use it as a bug hunter or red teamer. But it is kind of the gold standard that a lot of the tool makers should probably work towards. Spiderfoot um, is another one um, that does a lot of OSINT type uh, domain correlation information. It does some of the techniques we've talked about um, in this presentation. They're adding more all the time. I know the author is really strictly uh, interested in adding more bug bounty uh, focused features in it. So, um, and it's got a great graphing library and monitoring and everything. So Spiderfoot's pretty cool. The unreleased project discovery, we've talked about project discovery a couple times in the presentation, that team, uh, their unreleased framework looks to be a killer, looks to be awesome. Um, I'm really excited about it when it comes out. Um, so yeah, you can see here, dashboard of a project, all your discovered domains and seeds, um, what the scan process is. And then if you dig into any of those, you get screenshots, port scans, technology identification of the site. Um, its activity, its changes over time. So um, the discovery framework when it comes out will, will be pretty cool. Um, Jails is a vulnerability scanner written by Jesse JJJ and, and team. Um, it is also really good. Um, it is a, a GUI flow that wraps around some command line stuff. Um, it does vulnerability scanning, um, which, you know, if you're working with Nessus or, you know, not a lot of red teams are verbatim scanning with Nessus, but if you want to look for some very pointed stuff. You can use Jails and look at their kind of uh, CVE checks that they use. And um, you can see signatures there for the Zoho management page and Fuel CMS RCE. And so they're looking for um, some cool volume Jails. I really like it. Um, Osmedius is awesome as well. It's very similar to some of the previous pages we've seen. Uh, it'll take all of your domains it will do, uh, it'll take all your subdomains, it will resolve them to IP, it will do port scanning on them, it'll tell you the technologies, um, it will do screenshots, it'll do all kinds of stuff. So Asmedius is also pretty easy to stand up and really good. Huntersuite.io, also same kind of idea. You can see technology parsing, services, uh, domain discovery, et cetera. Bounty.offensive.ai. Uh, same type of deal, right? Includes some vulnerability scanning, technology, fingerprinting, 
um, subdomain finding, um, and then attack graphing. Um, Reengine is the one I used last week or week before. Reengine is pretty sick. Uh, you you can have projects in it that are separate. It'll do the subdomain scanning. It basically takes the methodology that I outlined in this presentation and turns it into a tool, um, a hosted tool. Um, and they're they're making some improvements, you know, every week. So lots of uh, potential on reengine re recon engine, um, which I highly suggest checking out. And then Scout PDP on the SecApps team, they've been working on tools for well over a decade. And um, they have built out Scout, which is a paid offering, but it's affordable enough for bounty hunters. Same idea, right? Projects, subdomain enumeration, related domains, reverse DNS. It supports screenshotting. It's awesome. So um, awesome tool. And uh, yeah. And then lastly, um, Nuclei, I, I talked about it very briefly, but uh, anyone who's not using Nuclei in their bounty scanning right now is, is at a disadvantage. They're coming out with some epic templates for CVE identification. Um, and, uh, and you can basically build your own via a YAML file. And it's a scanner that'll go out and scan all your domains for uh, vulnerabilities, subdomain takeovers, all kinds of stuff. So um, I really have been using Nuclei to great success lately. And that's it. That's all I got. So that's the Bug Hunters methodology. And uh, thanks for giving me the time today. I really appreciate it. Sorry I went over a little bit. No worries. Thank you so much for the presentation and amazing support. And uh, once again, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for supporting DEF CON and the DEF CON Red Team Village. And oh, thank a you for having reminder me. for everyone here, you know, please take a look at all the talks and activities that we have in our website. We have the CTF, of course, the Cyber Wraith um, contest as well. Tons and tons of activities throughout this uh, weekend. Uh, the link should be in the description at in the bottom of your stream. I know that 